I agree with Walter. I think one of the most necessary things we need right now is a journalist in space. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see uh, people explain to the public uh, why individuals would want to go into space to a, in a very professional way, uh, a way that the public can relate to and can understand, and not a biased point of view of someone whose profession it is to be in space. But we well, want to know why a journalist would take the risk. After all, you get paid a lot uh, just by staying on the ground. <laughs> it's not the pay, I'm, I'm sure of that. But, but uh, even more important than that, I think, is to relate the desire to be in space why do you take the risk? Because we're laying the groundwork for the next generation space shuttle, which is going to carry a good number of people into space. Not just the, the number that NASA needs, but the number that are needed economically for a tourism industry. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, well, I have to jump in for one minute. I got to tell you, excuse me, Chuck, I got to jump in here for one minute. The words Godspeed, John Glenn, were etched in all of our memories. Anybody who's ever seen that launch, the words uttered by Scott Carpenter. As we look at the clock as it counts down toward the launch of Discovery, Scott Carpenter is here uh, at the Kennedy Space Center, and he will be uttering uh, similar greetings to the uh, orbiter. However, they won't be able to hear it. They'll hear it later. It'll be sent up via satellite to the orbiter after it uh, attains its orbit this afternoon. And let's listen in to that. For the crew aboard Discovery. Yes, at this point in the count, it seems appropriate to say to the shuttle discovery crew, good luck, have a safe flight, and to say once again, Godspeed, John Glenn. Carpenter served as Glenn's backup for Those the Mercury Those are words etched in all our memories. Godspeed, John Glenn, it said it all then, and uh, Scott Carpenter uh, embellishing upon it today. It uh, kind of gives you goosebumps at that moment, doesn't it? What are you up to these days, Buzz? I, uh, uh, I, I see you more than almost any of the other astronauts. We meet in the strangest places. Roads, for Rose, one place. Island, and, uh, yes. <laughs> yes right. yeah. Well, I was in the process of writing a book over there when we met uh, oh. maybe 10, 10 years ago, something like that. Yeah. Uh, I've written another science fiction story since then. That's being made into a, a television movie. I'm working on another space thriller. But in addition to that, the more uh, pertinent things, I'm uh, working with an organization with reusable first stage rockets. We take a rocket that already exists like an atlas and we put an airplane around it so that after it does its job of lifting the upper stages, it comes back and flies like an airplane uh, back to land. How do you know, this you know idea. one of the one of the Pinamunda boys, one of the German Pinamunda scientists, uh, Kraft Ericke, yes, who worked for Convair, and built the built the Atlas. Uh, he uh, uh, he had this plan of getting the Atlas actually launched, and then taking those empty tanks and building a space station of those. It made a lot of sense. Well, that's going to make sense in the future, as I see it, too, Walter. All right, for now, it's Grist for Science Fiction. We do have to take a break right now. We want to thank uh, General Yeager, who is still with us on the line from Sacramento. Godspeed, Chuck Yeager. We appreciate you being with us here on CNN today. Thanks, and good luck. All right, take care. Take we're care, Chuck. All right, we're going to take a talk break. To you, Chuck. The uh, countdown here continues. CNN's live coverage continues. We are now about 17 minutes away from the expected liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery, the clock holding at nine minutes. Stay with us.